I took a route that many people take in that I was pre-med when I first came to college or thought that I was and then woke up and said, I'm not. Um, and not because I couldn't have, but because I realized that God doesn't necessarily call every sincere person who's good at biology and wants to change the world to medicine, which is sort of what you think when you're in high school and you're biological oriented. So that most students in most schools that come into biology think they're pre-med. And our students are no different. And so I often have the role of being the one that represents, um, come hang out with me. You know, you're allowed to have a career where you get outside and you could honor God that way. I think students are getting a better sense of that than they used to have because of a lot of more environmental stewardship interest in the evangelical community. And, I, and that's a good thing. One of my degrees is in oceanography and limnology, but I'm not really the oceanography end of things. And we do have a marine scientist. So I'm an aquatic ecologist, but my specialty is small wetlands that dry. And we have a lot of them. And in New England, they're often called, they're often vernal pools. And vernal pools are wooded wetlands that have a very unique habitat. They're in decline. And um, we have a number of them. So I've been following um, about I have about 20 sites, and um, we, I count egg mass as a spotted salamander and wood frog every spring, and I'm trying to see if I can see any trends. And when you see an aerial shot, if you ever notice, you know, we're two miles from the ocean, and we're on a little, there's a little knoll, and then it's like flat and wet, you know, out to the ocean. And that's fabulous for me. <laughs> from our department, you know, of course, it's nice to be have a marine science uh, concentration and be able to go to the ocean so easily. So the coast is very nice from a scientific point of view and a personal point of view. Obviously having a forested landscape makes a big difference if you like forests, and I do. I would say we allow, encourage, and sometimes force <laughs> critical thinking. And yet we are still very devout very strongly evangelical Christian institution. You know, everybody says, oh, and how do you do that in science? Like somehow scientists are just unique in their difficulty in this. But you ask the artists, they're all trying to figure out how to live in a largely secular art world and have a Christian voice. You know, you read the literature people have their stuff, the biblical studies people who you would think would have no difficulty whatsoever. You know, they're always on the hot seat about things, psychology, everybody. Everybody's got their part of the picture where you have to ask the question, how does having a Christian worldview affect me and, and this discipline? How, how, what does it mean? What do I bring to the table as a Christian that maybe I wouldn't if I wasn't? And, and then how does my discipline inform my Christianity? And that is where it's very clear that, that I think being a scientist informs my Christianity quite a bit because I have to have a thinking Christianity. <laughs> but so do all the other disciplines. I mean, if you have a shallow Christianity, you can't be really in a liberal arts discipline for very long before you hit the end of it, you know. I am allowed to think my own thoughts. I would say, if I woke up and said, I don't think I'm a Christian anymore, I would probably be told, well, this isn't the right institution for you. you know? <laughs> and that would be fair, you know, because we have a crafted mission and we are a community of faith. But what that allows, the freedom that comes from that, is that you don't start every conversation at base zero. When I talk with my friends as at big ecological meetings, every conversation that could have anything to do with God starts back at why I even think there might be a God. I never can have talk about <laughs> any of the details <laughs> you know, because you're always back at the beginning. And what this allows is for us not to be back at the beginning all of the time. That doesn't mean students never have to go back to the beginning. In fact, you walk in, and you at some point have to own your faith as an adult. Does it mean that sometimes it's dicey? Of course it's dicey. Everything in life is dicey. Anytime you have an interesting conversation with people who don't agree with you, it's dicey. But we do have a commitment 
to respectful dialogue, which you don't get every place. I mean, an institutional commitment to that.